Nikki Priest, a 22-year-old TikTok enthusiast, seemed like any other young mother enjoying time with her child, except there were very few TikToks of her and her daughter, and few people knew she had a child. Those that did never heard Nikki say a good thing about three-year-old Kaylee. It seems Nikki did not want her daughter. After Kaylee was found dead inside Nikki's flat, she went online, posting a reel with the caption, Rip My Baby, followed by Hearts and Angels. Then, she posted this. That's her crying crocodile tears and lip-syncing to a song called To My Parents. She sings, I'm sorry, mom and dad. I know I messed up bad. Should have done better. I'm sorry, mom and dad. Nikki opted to broadcast her seemingly remorseful message to her online audience of thousands. This public display of contrition, however, never reached the very people who had been there for Kaylee throughout her short life, her grandparents. A few days later, the grieving grandparents, along with the entire world, would find out the horrible truth. Nikki had unalived her daughter. Then, she went live on TikTok to tell the world what horrors she was going through. This is the heartbreaking story of Nikki and Kaylee Priest. Kaylee, Nikki's three-year-old daughter, was oblivious to her mother's inner turmoil. On the morning of August 8, 2020, she happily followed her along on a park trek in Birmingham, UK, trusting and innocent. Little did she know that this would be their last outing together. Just 24 hours later, a grim discovery was made. Kaylee lay lifeless, her tiny body marred by an array of green and purple bruises that told a story of unimaginable suffering. Emergency services flooded the apartment, but it was too late. Kaylee was pronounced dead at the scene, her short life cut tragically short. Nikki and her boyfriend, Callum, 21, stood before the paramedics, their expressions vacant and unreadable. When questioned about what had happened to Kaylee, their response was chilling in its nonchalance. Don't know. Found her like that. No tears, no anguish, no desperate pleas for help. Just a cold, detached statement that raised more questions than answers. The authorities, sensing that something was amiss, brought the couple in for questioning, but without sufficient evidence to hold them, they were released left to walk free while the investigation into Kaylee's death continued. Nikki, in a twisted bid for attention and sympathy, took to TikTok to share her grief with the world. In a series of tearful videos, she portrayed herself as a distraught mother, sobbing that she had messed up bad and begging for forgiveness. Her followers, unaware of the heinous truth, poured out their support and condolences, offering words of comfort to a woman they believed was a victim of tragedy. But Nikki's mourning was short-lived, just days after her heartfelt tributes to Kaylee, she was back to posting dance videos and makeup tutorials, her demeanor carefree and unburdened, as if the loss of her child was nothing more than a fleeting inconvenience. It was a jarring contrast that caught the attention of detectives who began to delve deeper into Nikki's past and her relationship with Kaylee. What they uncovered was a history of resentment and abuse that stretched back to the very beginning of Kaylee's life. Nikki, who had given birth to her daughter at the tender age of 18, had never wanted the response responsibilities of motherhood. She saw Kaylee as a burden, an obstacle to the life she desired. While Kaylee yearned for her mother's love and approval, Nikki responded with rage and violence, lashing out at her toddler on a daily basis. Neighbors, alerted by the sound of Kaylee's cries and the thud of blows, had long suspected that something was amiss. They recounted tales of seeing Nikki slam Kaylee into her stroller, of hearing her scream, I wish I never had you, through the thin walls of the apartment. Some had even considered reporting the abuse to the authorities but had ultimately chosen to stay silent, a decision that would haunt them in the aftermath of Kaylee's death. Nikki's own sister would confess to detectives that Nikki would do her hardest to pass little Kaylee around to her dad, parents, neighbors, or any babysitter who had time, anyone but her. Nikki's sister said her priorities were makeup and TikTok, not being a mom. She would put on makeup and dance around the room. Social media and people's view of her were at the center of her life. As the investigation investigation progressed, it became clear that Nikki's cruelty was not the only factor in Kaylee's tragic fate. Callum, the man she had moved in with after cycling through a string of failed relationships, had only served to escalate the abuse. Where Nikki's previous partner and Kaylee's dad, Dan, had shown genuine love and concern for Kaylee, Callum was cut from a different cloth. He encouraged and participated in the brutal punishments meted out to the defenseless child, taking sadistic pleasure in her suffering. Text messages exchanged between the couple 
laid bare the depths of their depravity. Nikki, I'm going to end her callum. Why, Nikki? Because she keeps leaving the living room or giving her in the kitchen, and I'm sick of it. I've striked her for shooting in her nappy. Nikki, good. Give her one from me, Kaylee. I will, babes. It was a chilling glimpse into the minds of two individuals who saw a helpless child as nothing more than a disposable object, a thing to be tormented and discarded at will. And here's the tragic thing. Kaylee could have grown up with her dad, Dan, or her grandparents. Any one of them would have been happy to have her and love her. But when Dan and Nikki's parents expressed concern over Kaylee's bruises, Nikki became defensive. She told them to mind their business, that she knew how to raise her kid, and then she cut them out of her life. By doing so, she sentenced little Kaylee to death. The night before Kaylee's death, a friend had visited the apartment, bearing witness to the bleak conditions in which the little girl was forced to exist. Kaylee, relegated to eating alone in the hallway, had no toys or decorations in her barren room, no signs of the love and care that every child deserves. The friend had heard Nikki's screams echoing through the apartment once more, a final ominous warning of the horror that was to come. In the early hours of the morning, as Kaylee lay battered and broken, Nikki and Callum had been engaged in an act of selfish gratification, their focus solely on their own pleasure. When Kaylee had cried out, interrupting their sordid encounter, they had flown into a rage, unleashing a brutal assault on the helpless child. Beaten severely and left to suffer, Kaylee had slowly succumbed to her injuries, her life ebbing away as her mother and her boyfriend looked on with cold indifference. As the community rallied to honor Kaylee's memory, leaving flowers and tributes outside the apartment where she had drawn her last breath, Nikki continued to post dance videos, her callous disregard for her daughter's death on full display. It was a final, sickening insult to a life cut so tragically short. When the truth finally came to light, the outpouring of grief and anger was palpable. Nikki and Callum were arrested and charged with the heinous crime, each pointing the finger at the other in a futile attempt to escape culpability. But the evidence was damning, the text messages and witness accounts painting a picture of unimaginable cruelty and neglect. On August 8th, at 11.17 p.m., Callum had left with his friend Matthew. Callum, I am okay. What about you, baby? How's Kaylee sick anymore after? Nikki, good. I'm good. She's still being sick. Callum, hmm. Why, what's up? Nikki, nothing, babe. Just feels sick, and now just sick in the bowl. She gets upset when I go check on her, babe. Nikki also promised Callum she would end her daughter for being sick. She had been sick for weeks because of them, and yet they were punishing her for it. All of these messages were played in the courtroom. People gasped and cried, but Nikki and Callum showed no emotion. The judge laid bare the true nature of their actions. Kaylee had not been a cherished daughter, but an inconvenience, a thing that stood in the way of their depraved lifestyles. Nikki, who had never wanted a child, had found in Callum a willing accomplice in her quest to rid herself of the burden of motherhood. Together, they had subjected Kaylee to a life of torment, slowly breaking her body and spirit until there was nothing left to save. In court, the coroner also said this about Kaylee's autopsy report. I've only seen one similar only when an older child was harmed by a horse. Whatever the cause, whoever caused it, it would be apparent to anybody that this little girl was desperately ill. The tragedy of Kaylee Priest's short life is a stark reminder of the consequences of inaction in the face of evil. So many had seen the signs, had witnessed the abuse firsthand, yet had chosen to remain silent. Neighbors, babysitters, relatives, all had played a part in allowing the abuse to continue unchecked, their silence a tacit endorsement of the horrors inflicted upon an innocent child. Kaylee's death is a clarion call to all who witness the suffering of the vulnerable. It is a reminder that we have a moral obligation to speak out, to intervene, to do whatever it takes to protect those who cannot protect themselves. For every Kaylee, there are countless other children suffering in silence, their cries for help going unheard and unanswered. As we mourn the loss of this sweet, loving girl, let us honor her memory by pledging to be vigilant, to be the voice for the voiceless. Let us work to create a world where no child has to endure the pain and trauma inflicted upon Kaylee, where every child is cherished, protected, and loved. Nikki and Callum were found guilty of manslaughter and child cruelty due to all of the unreported injuries that slowly led to Kaylee's untimely death. Nikki was sentenced to 15 years, and Callum was sentenced to 14 years behind bars. Kaylee Priest may be gone, but her legacy lives on in the hearts of all who knew her, and in the collective resolve of a community determined to ensure 
ensure that her death was not in vain. May her story serve as a reminder of the power we all hold to make a difference, to be the light in the darkness, and to stand up for what is right, no matter the cost. Rest in peace, Kaylee. You were loved, you were valued, and you will never be forgotten. Thanks for watching. Leave a thoughtful comment and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. See you soon.